नमस्ते टू ऑल स्टूडेंट्स खुश हो बिटिया माई सर जेवेन डॉक्टर खुशबू वर्मा फ्रॉम फैकल्टी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड वेटनरी साइंस टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट क्रायो प्रिजर्वेशन एंड दिस सेशन रिलेटेड टू कोर्स प्लान बाय टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ प्रोग्राम एम एस सी बी टी सेकेंड सेल क्रायो प्रिजर्वेशन इज अ नॉन लीथल स्टोरेज ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल मेटीरियल एट अल्ट्रा लो टेम्परेचर एट द टेम्परेचर ऑफ लिक्विड नाइट्रोजन माइनस वन नाइनटी सिक्स डिग्री ऑलमोस्ट ऑल मेटाबोलिक एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द सेल्स आर सीज एंड द सैंपल कैन देन बी प्रिजर्व इन सच स्टेट फॉर एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड्स हाउ एवर ओनली फ्यू बायोलॉजिकल मेटीरियल कैन बी फ्रोजन टू माइनस वन नाइनटी सिक्स डिग्री विदाउट अफेक्टिंग सेल वायबिलिटी इन रिसेंट ईयर्स विद ट्रेमेंडियस इंक्रीज इन द पॉपुलेशन forest land resources population of medicinal plants aromatic plant species has been decreased so liquid nitrogen is most widely used material for the cryo preservation dry ice can also be used there are some advantages regarding liquid nitrogen means it is chemically invert relatively low cost it is non toxic non flammable and readily available that's why it is mostly it is most used and useful component for cryo preservation so in cryo preservation first of all you have to go for the storage then you can uh, go for the thawing and uh, you can check or you can determine about the survive, survival or viability So in the storage process the frozen cells or tissues are kept for storage at temperature range from minus 70 to minus 196 degree temperature should be sufficiently low for long term storage of cell to stop all metabolic activities and prevent biochemical injury long term storage is best done at minus 196 degree temperature next stage is thawing so it is done by putting ampoule containing the sample in a warm water bath which is in range of 35 to 40 degree frozen tips for the sample in tubes or ampoule are plunged into the warm water with a vigorous swirling action just to the point of ice disappearance it is important for the survival of the tissue that the tube should not be left in the warm water bath after ice melts third stage which is determination of survival so regrowth of the plants from stored tissues or cells is the only test for survival of plant material so various viability test include fluorescein diacetate staining fd staining growth measurement by cell number dry and fresh weight you can also do for viability testing and uh, there are some important staining methods first one is evans blue stain in evans blue staining one drop of 0.1% solution of evans blue is added to the cell suspension on a microscope slide and observed under light microscope only non viable cells means dead cells stain with evans blue so percentage of viable cells is equal to number of fluorescent cells into 100 total number of cells what are the applications of cryo preservation so you can do freezing of cell cultures you can maintain disease free stock seed bank gene bank you can prepare and storage of real germplasm can done be by cryo preservation method so in technique of cryo preservation first of all you have to collect and preserve cells and tissue then addition of cryo protectants like uh, vitrification you can do and cryo protective dehydration you can do third in the third stage you have to do freezing by three methods slow freezing method rapid freezing method step wise freezing method fourth step is storage fifth step is thawing so in collection of cells first of all you have to know that what can cryo preserves 
So in general, cryopreservation is easier for thin samples and small clumps of individual cells because these can be cooled more quickly and so required low, lower dose of toxic cryoprotectants. Therefore, the goal of cryopreserving human livers and hearts for the storage and transplant is still some distance away. Nevertheless, uh, suitable combinations of cryoprotectants and regames of cooling and rising during warming often allow the successful cryopreservation of biological materials, particularly cell suspensions or thin tissue samples like semen, blood, stem cell, amnical cord blood, egg means oocyte, embryo with the two, four or eight cell stage and plants like seed and shoot samples. Next step, which is addition of cryoprotectant. So there are two potential sources of cell damage during cryopreservation. First is formation of large ice crystals inside the cell. Second, intracellular concentration of solutes increase to toxic levels because before or during freezing as a result of dehydration. Cryoprotectants act like antifreeze, they lower freezing temperature and increase the viscosity. What are the benefits, uh, benefits of vitrification? So first of all, you have to know about vitrification. So it is a process in which ice formation can't take place because the aqueous solution is too concentrated to permit ice crystals nucleation. Instead, water solidifies into an amorphous glassy state. It is rapid cooling process, which also promote, uh, promotes the vitrification. Next is cryoprotective dehydration. If cells are sufficiently dehydrated, they may be able to withstand immersion in liquid nitrogen. Dehydration can be achieved by growing in presence of high concentration of osmotically active compounds like sugar, polynols, and or, or air desiccation in a sterile flow cabinet or over silica gel. Dehydration reduces the cell form ice formation, increase the osmotic pressure of the inter intracellular solution, means cytoplasm, which depresses its freezing temperature. Various cryoprotectants used are glycerol, dimethyl sulfoxide, mannitol, propylene, choline, etc. Next step is freezing, which includes three methods, slow freezing method, SFM, rapid freezing method, RFM, and stepwise freezing method. In slow freezing method, tissue is slowly frozen with a decrease in temperature of minus 0.5 degree to minus 5 degree temperature per minute from 0 to 100 degree temperature and then transferred to the liquid nitrogen. In rapid freezing method, the material is plunged into liquid nitrogen decreases in temperature from minus 300 degree to minus 1000 degree temperature per minute or more. The quicker the freezing is done, the smaller the ice is crystal. Third, in the third step, which is a stepwise freezing method. So in this method, low freezing down to minus 20 degree to 400 degree, a stop for a period of approximately 30 minutes, and then additional rapid freezing to minus 196 degree is done by plunging in liquid nitrogen. After freezing method, there is a storage step. So storage of frozen material at the correct temperature is an important Step. So, in general, the frozen cells or tissues are kept for storage at the ranging from minus 70 to minus 196 degree. However, with temperature above one minus 130, ice crystals grow may occur inside the cell, which reduces the viability of the cell. Storage is ideally done in liquid nitrogen refrigerator at minus 150 degree in vapor phase or at minus 196, 196 degree in liquid phase. The ultimate objective of storage is to stop all the cellular metabolic activities and maintain their viability for long term. For long term storage temperature at minus 196 degree in liquid nitrogen is ideal. A regular and constant supply of liquid nitrogen to refrigerator is essential. 
next step is thawing so it is done by putting the ampoule containing sample in a warm water bath with the range of temperature 35 to 45 degree by this approach rapid thawing at the rate of 500 to 700 750 degree temperature per minute occurs and the protects and uh, this protects the cell wall cell from damaging effect of ice crystal formation as a thawing occurs means ice completely melts the ampoule are quickly transferred to the water bath at temperature 20 degree to 25 degree temperature this transfer is necessary since the cell get damaged if left for long period in warm water of 35 to 45 degree temperature for cryopreserved material means cells or tissues where the water content has been reduced to an optimal level before freezing the process of thawing becomes less critical what are the benefits and disadvantages of uh, cryopreservation so first of all we are going to discuss about the benefits so it is useful in the breeding of dairy cattle pigs and dogs the cryopreserved blood can be stored for many years and transfused to required person the cancer and tumor cells can be preserved for further research stem cells umbilical cord blood skin cells are preserved for further use it is also helpful for endangered animals and plants which are required for medicine and fragrant purpose and it is quite safe for ivf because the donor is resist uh, retested for HIV. What are the disadvantages of cryopreservation? So it is it is very high costly method and uh, it has some social issues. Uh, along with the cryopreservation, there is a one term which is cell banking. So cell bank is a facility that stores cells of a specific genome for different purposes. The first person accredited with Making a cell bank for widespread use was Kral. He was a scientist who created his cell bank collection in the late 1890s. So this is the sum up of this session and this session is powered by Digital Version 2.0 Jyoti Vidya Peet Women's University Jaipur. If you have any query then mention in the comment box I will resolve it. Thank you.